Good morning, everybody. It has been a while since I posted a morning musing, and for that, I apologize. The reality is, after a couple of months, a couple of great months, in which I had my depression and anxiety under control, I've had a rough week. Nothing to worry about, no big deal. It just means that I'm not getting done the things that I want to get done. But today, I'm ready to get back at it. And as you can see, I'm in new surroundings. The cold weather has set in here in Oregon. We've had our first freezing temperatures and it's not comfortable to sit down in my writing studio. So I've moved my uh, main computer to the rented office space and I've moved my backup, my old computer here to Kim's office, which is where we are right now. You can hear the furnace running. There's a cat with me and you can hear a mouse gnawing in the wall. There are a few things that are allowing me to address this current bout of depression in a more productive manner than in the past. Number one, I'm near the end of sober October. Uh, I have had no alcohol and no pot this month. And as you know, if you've been watching, I haven't actually had alcohol since Independence Day, since July 4th. So because I'm sober, it's making me much more equipped to handle uh, these feelings that I'm having this anxiety and this depression. Number two is my recent focus on essentialism. I have been cutting back to only the most important things in life and that's really helped me from feeling overwhelmed. A lot of times when I go through these depressive episodes I'm feeling too overwhelmed to do anything and I just like ah, I freak out. This time I'm focusing on the essentials and that's great. And number three is I've been reading this book Wake Up and Live by Dorothy Brand. It's a book from the 1930s, 1936, January 1936 is when it was published. And it's one of the earliest self-help books that I found that's written in the modern style. The whole premise of Wake Up and Live, a formula for success that actually works. The whole premise is this. We have as the first tenet of success Act as if it were impossible to fail. Reclaim as much possible of the energy that now goes into reverie or time killing and devote it to pur purposeful activity. I think that's great. And this is something that I try to preach a lot in my writing when it comes to personal finance, and that is action is much more important than words. Your dreams don't amount to anything if you don't act on them, right? Action is what matters, and that's what she's talking about here. And you'll notice that she used the word success. And I love the way she just defines success. Uh, there's a lot of talk about success in self-help culture and what success actually is. And Brand defines it as accomplishing the goals that you want to accomplish. Success is different from person to person. And all that really matters is that you're able to get done what you want to get done. You notice the dog is barking. This is the hazard of doing these videos in the house. Cats jumping on you, furnace going, dog barking. It's just the way it's gonna be for the next couple of months. I don't know what made me pick up, uh, wake up and live and decide to read it at this time, other than the fact that I'm always reading old self-help and personal finance books, but it was exactly what I needed to hear uh, in this current state where I'm kind of like feeling oh, trapped and not getting done the things that I wanna get done. To give you an example of the value that I found in this little book, I'm gonna to read to you a few of the quotes that really spoke to me. First of all, the theme that she's trying to impart here is that most of us live below our potential. We don't accomplish everything that we could. And she's not saying that every moment of our day should be productive, but she is arguing that we should be productive and move toward our goals enough that we feel satisfied with ourselves. Instead, she says that most people are uh, entrapped in this will to fail. They're so scared of the pain that might come, that potentially could come through expanding effort to achieve success. We imagine this pain so we don't actually make any progress toward our goals. The result is we get actual pain from the uh, feelings of not failure necessarily, well, okay, failure, from the feelings of failure to achieve what we want to achieve. That's a sure pain instead of this potential pain that we might feel working toward our goals. 
uh, Brand doesn't say that we each have the same number, number of hours in each day, but that's what she implies. We each have the same number of hours in each day. And some people choose to use that time more productively than others. And when I'm in this state, when I'm feeling depressed, when I'm feeling anxious, it's because I know that I'm not using my hours in a way that moves me towards my goals. Brand says, one infinitesimal accomplishment in reality is worth a mountain of dreams. Doing one thing, one tiny thing that's an accomplishment that you can point to and say, I did this, is worth all of your thoughts and dreams and desires. And that was really powerful to me because I have this to-do list right here in front of me, all these things I want to get done. But they're just dreams if I don't do them, right? Dreams remain dreams without doing. I like the way Brand defines success. She says, what is success? Accomplishing well that which you set out to do. So success isn't some predefined thing that's the same for everyone. It's different for each person. Whatever you want to do, if you do it well, that is success. And she points out that the smallest task done well brings satisfaction. Uh, with my recent push towards essentialism, that's something that I've been trying to stress to myself. I want to be mindful whenever I do a task, whenever I'm recording a video, whenever I'm cleaning the house, I want to be recording the video or cleaning the house. I want to be in the moment. I want to be present for that task and doing it to the best of my ability, whatever that happens to be in the moment. Right now, I don't have a microphone, I don't have a fancy camera, and I'm sitting next to the furnace, and there's a mouse gnaw in the wall. So the quality of this video is not going to be the same as if I had my other gear set up here, if I had my uh, computer that I moved to the office where I have the microphone and I have uh, the fancy camera and it's quiet. The quality, the objective quality of that video is gonna be much different than in this video is. But I am doing the best that I can in this moment, and that is what success is, and that is what is important. Brand has a quote from Ralph Waldo Emerson that I had never heard before. Emerson said, the law of nature is do the thing and you shall have the power. And I love that. I always say, if you do what's right and you do your best, then the consequences are irrelevant. You have done your part. And that is essentially what Brand is arguing in this book. And again, her core theme in Wake Up and Live is to ask yourself, what would you do if you knew that it were impossible to fail? And that's not to say that it is impossible to fail, but that you should base your actions and, and do these things regardless of whether or not you're actually going to be able to accomplish them fully in the moment that you set out to do them. Any action is better than no action at all. Anyhow, this is advice that I really, really needed to hear right now. It was serendipity that I picked up Wake Up and Live at this moment because I've been kind of mired in this depression for the past four or five days. And when I'm in the depression, I don't act at all. I sit in the hot tub, uh, I watch junk movies, I read junk books, I play junk video games. Well, that doesn't, it doesn't help. It just spirals me out of, into deeper and deeper depression, right? So today I resolved that I'm going to tackle my to-do list. And it doesn't matter how many things I get accomplished, I'm already doing one, I'm recording this video. Uh, I have a call with my business partner, Tom, in 36 minutes. And I know that I'm gonna to go to the office and do some stuff there. So I'm gonna get some things done, which is better than getting nothing done at all. That's my message for today. Wake up and live. I plan to be back tomorrow with another video. I had, When I sat down, I thought I was gonna to talk to you about sunk costs. Instead, I talked about this book. Tomorrow, maybe we'll talk about sunk costs. I'll see you then.